YouTube, how are we doing? And welcome back to my show. My name's Phil. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and ate lots of food like me. I think I've put on about a stone in weight, no lie. Well, we're here today to talk about Chelsea Football Club. Let's go. Now, guys, thank you, as I just said, for joining me today. Now, where do we start with Chelsea at the moment? Should we start with Arsenal? Oh, man, I watched them against Arsenal, and for me, personally, I think Arsenal played them off the park with their new young team that, that seems to look good. I've always been a big, big fan of Arteta, a massive fan. Chelsea just didn't turn up. Kovacic was amazing. Yeah, let's give some props to Kovacic. I thought he played well, but then they took him off and brought Jorginho on. I just don't get Jorginho, guys. Sorry at home if I'm a Sandy Light, I'm someone who doesn't, you know, really like Jorginho, I do. But I think his style of play is much better suited to Serie A. It's not suited to the Premier League. Now, when I see Jorginho play, it's just negative football. It's that pass-back mentality. Pass-back, pass-back, pass-back. The only positives I can take from the Arsenal game, for me, watching it, was Kovacic. That, that's all I've got to say about the Arsenal game. It was a poor game. Chelsea were outplayed, Arsenal were the better team, and Kovacic, you can kind of take a bit of encouragement and say, you know what, Kovacic is, is our best player. And I, I will stand by this at the moment. For me, Kovacic is the best player at the club for consistency. Let's talk about Villa. <sighs> Villa, man. For me, Villa looked like the team that wanted to win the game. Everyone's going, yeah, it should have been a draw. But I, I watched the game, and I thought Villa were the better team. First off, yeah, you can say towards the end we look better. Giroud's goal was fantastic. Giroud needs to play, guys. Giroud needs to start week in, week out. Because at the moment, that kind of long ball that we're putting into the box, Werner's not going to be able to score if we play him up front because he's not good in the air. And although Tammy Abraham's quite tall, he's not good in the air. So at the moment, because Giroud is so powerful in the air, Giroud needs to start. Now against Villa, let's talk about um, more in depth. I, I kind of look at the Villa game. And I think, what positives can we take from that game? There's a few. So, Frank Lampard, who I'm still a massive fan of, and I, I for one, hope Chelsea keep him and don't sack him. You've got to give him time, 100%. But for me, the, the positives, let's, let's start with the positives first. Tony Rudiger at the back, I thought, played well. I thought Rudiger was really well kind of aware in the back. He was clearing stuff. He wasn't doing anything messy. His distribution was good and his awareness was good. The, the performance for me for Tony Rudiger was very promising and it would have done him the world of good with his confidence. I thought Hudson Adoy played well again. He looked sharp. He, you know, he's, he is playing at the moment for that kind of mindset of saying, this is my position. I'm going to claim this spot and I want to be in. We can't always rely on Ziyech, guys. Ziyech ain't going to be back for any time. I don't know. When's he coming back? I don't think he's any time soon. People are saying he could be back against Man City. I, I can't see it, but for me, Hudson Adoy, the vision, his philosophy on the pitch, his energy, his power, that was a positive. So Tony Rudiger for me, Hudson Adoy, Giroud, Giroud has to start. When Giroud starts, I feel so happy. When he's taken off sometimes, I'm like, again, let's go back to Arsenal. Giroud should have started for me personally. So let, let's talk about, their, they were the two positives for me, Tony Rudiger and Hudson Adoy. Pulisic played okay. But they were the two players for me that stood out. Let's start on the negative. Okay, you're going to drop Kovacic. And I get it because you want him to be fit for Man City like uh, Zuma and Thiago Silva. Why didn't you bring in Billy Gilmore? Billy Gilmore should have been brought in. Yeah, okay, you want to rest Kovacic. I get that and I get the narrative. But drop Kovacic, rest him and bring in Billy Gilmore over Jorginho. Guys, I say this time and time again. Jorginho style of play doesn't suit Chelsea. It's such a negative kind of mindset when he's on the ball. There's no, he doesn't look up. It's just pass back, pass back, pass back. And I, I've got a problem with Jorginho at the minute. He's most probably a lovely guy, but in football terms, when he missed that penalty against Arsenal, you don't know. Things could have changed in that game if, if um, Mount's free kick would have gone in. But nevertheless, Arsenal were a better team. After the game, he was all like smiley and jokey with the Arsenal players. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I believe there should be sportsmanship. But, mate, you've just missed the penalty. And, you, and you're laughing with, like, the Arsenal players. I just don't get it. I don't think Jorginho wears his heart on the sleeve for the club. Dropping, well, I keep saying dropping, but resting Kovacic and bringing Billy Gilmore in, I think you would have seen a completely different game at Villa. Everything about Billy Gilmore is great. He's skillful. 
He's quite powerful for his size, his awareness, his distribution, he's alert, he plays with passion, he has flair, he can read a game. Billy Gilmore really reads a game. For me, he's got elements of Zola, Iniesta, Makaleli, the way he defends. Moving forward, guys, I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. I would drop Kante for Billy Gilmore and have Billy Gilmore and Kovacic in. I would, and I would sell Kante in a January uh, market. I would sell him in the trans when, once the transfer market opens up. I'd sell him. You'd get about 40, 50 mil. He's been a great servant to Chelsea. He was a great servant to Leicester. I think it's time for him to go on. I was watching him against Villa, and he was just running around like a headless chicken, but there was no end game there for me. So they're the positive, they're the negatives for me, sorry. that, that I, I kind of looked and thought, why wasn't Billy Gilmore in? Then you kind of look at the back four. Okay, you're giving Thiago and Zuma a rest. You're bringing in Rudiger. Good call, he played well. Why are you not bringing in Tamore? You brought in Christensen, and that's where the goal happened. He went down there. I'm sure he was hurt. I'm sure he was injured, and he was, you know, suffering some pain. But then we were we were a man down, and then boom, in goal. You know, through Mendy's legs. Weren't really Mendy's fault. There's not a lot Mendy could have done. He might have saved it. Mendy still looks a bit unsteady for me. I don't know if he's kind of lost his confidence. But there's just loads of things at the moment that I question Lampard. Lampard is an amazing manager. He's a phenomenal footballer and he's that Chelsea. And he's a Chelsea legend, Chelsea god, Chelsea icon. Some of his decision making baffles me. Bringing in Jorginho, you know, not playing Giroud enough. Now, I know Giroud's just turned 34, but I believe with Giroud... You've got someone who's never really suffered big injuries and can play week in, week out because it's just that kind of striker that holds up the ball, don't really get injured, conserve a lot of energy and put goals away. Against Man City, guys, if that game goes ahead, it's so imperative that someone like Juru starts. Now, I know I'm a big fanboy of the French playboy, but he's got to play. I would drop Kante, bring Billy Gilmore in, Kovacic, you know the back four, Hopefully, Reese James is still, you know, he's, he's getting fitter because I know his knees are a bit of a worry and he could maybe have surgery. But, you know, with Aspie, he's reliable. He doesn't do what Reese James does, but, you know, he's going to put a shift in. Cheerwell, I, I forgot to say as well, against Villa, he was a massive positive because he played amazing. So, hopefully, he's fit. But the one, the one thing I would question, guys, at the moment, why do Chelsea players keep getting injured as much as they do? Is something happening at the training ground? Is training too kind of hard? Is it too intense on the players? Is the schedule too intense that they're not recovering enough? I don't know, but you know, Ziyech is injured. Pulisic comes back. He has a few good games. He gets injured. You know, Cheerwill, uh, Rhys James. It's a worrying sign. Now, I know Silver's not going to be out to play every game, but he surprised me with his fitness, if I'm honest. You know, he seems to be there, up for the game, ready to go. We can't rely on Ziyech, guys. I, I I think this narrative that, oh, when Ziyech comes back, we can't rely on him. And we can't play Werner on the wing anymore. I know that he was dropped for Villa. Do you chance it against Man City and play him up front? Maybe, but I would start Giroud personally. Uh, and then maybe start Werner in the, um, well, Cup, the, the FA Cup. I would start him in the FA Cup and get, get him out and see how he does up front. But we can't play him on the wing anymore, guys. It's impossible to play Werner on the wing. It just doesn't work. He, you know, he's lacking confidence. Maybe starting him up front, he may score a couple of goals. That confidence may come back and then so on, so on, scores goals, scores goals. The, the, the great thing at the moment for me is that the league's so open. Chelsea are you know, two wins away from maybe being second in the league. Now, a few months ago, I know I give Oli some flack at United, but look how United have turned themselves around and they're up there. Hopefully, Frank does the same. Man City is a must win if the game goes ahead. If the game doesn't go ahead, I'm kind of looking at it as, well, at least the players that are out injured, they've got time to rest and get fit. So let's pray that the game does go ahead. But if it doesn't, then it's still um, a massive positive for Chelsea because players that are injured get to rest up. But guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today, listening to me talk all things football, all things sport. We're going to be coming back in the coming weeks talking more stuff on football, boxing, MMA and male grooming. Yeah, I've just said it, male grooming. Should be fun. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you soon.